So recently NVIDIA have launched their RTX lineup of graphics cards and here on Tech yes City we've reviewed quite a few already ranging from the Gigabyte to the ASUS ROG and now here on the table we've got the Aorus lineup which is a step up from the Gigabyte models in not just aesthetics but also build quality as well as overclocking. So these models here, these are the X editions. So out of the factory, they will come with a pre-overclock that essentially will make them faster than other RTX cards out on the market. But all that aside, let's take a look at these cards versus a stack of other cards in the similar price range. Welcome back to Tech yes City, and let's get straight into those gaming benchmarks where we've tested both 1440p and also 4K Ultra numbers, which I believe these three cards here on the bench will lie in terms of their sweet spot performance. And the first title is Battlefield 5. And here we saw both the RTX 2080 Ti's coming out in front of the 1080 Ti, uh, but also the 2080 scoring a victory over the 1080 Ti too. The Aorus 2080 Ti out of the box does beat the ASUS ROG variant, and this is something that we'll see as a trend going with some of the other games here. Also with Battlefield 5, we decided to test with RTX off, even though the new cards support this feature. It just really affected performance to the point where it was literally a joke. But also stepping back to 1440p, we can see the RTX 2070 was also giving the 1080 Ti a run for its money. And this is a latest and greatest title, and this trend will be up and down throughout these benchmarks. Uh, for instance, GTA 5, on the flip side, does favor the 1080 Ti, at least compared to Battlefield 5, in terms of performance. Uh, getting close to that of the RTX 2080 Ti numbers and beating out the 2080 and the 2070. And again, however, the 2080 Ti from Aorus is leading that scoreboard uh, with that factory overclock out of the box. With the FPS gap, however, between the 2080 Ti and everything else, uh, sort of widened. I guess that GDDR6 with eight times MSAA on does help this card uh, pull ahead by quite a bit at 4K. But now moving over to Forza Horizon 4, we can see at both 1440p Ultra and 4K Ultra results, the RTX 2080 was beating out uh, the GTX 1080 Ti, and also the RTX 2080 Ti, the Aorus model, beating the Strix again, but beating everything else. And then the RTX 2070 did give the 1080 Ti a run for its money, and also the 2080 even a run for its money. And as I've said in the past, I do think the RTX 2070 is a great value proposition here. And these titles do show that it is a sweet spot, at least in terms of price performance. Moving on now to Rainbow Six Siege, a competitive multiplayer title, and we finally fixed the inconsistencies we're getting with these benchmark numbers, and that had to do with the TAA setting in anti-aliasing. And at 1440p Ultra, we saw the 2070 coming awfully close to the 1080 Ti, and then also the 2080 pulling ahead. Uh, but then when we went to 4K, we saw a big stretch between the 2080 Ti and practically everything here on the benchmark suite. And of course, that Aorus beating out the RS Strix uh, yet again out of the box. And now moving on to Assassin's Creed Origins at 1440p max settings, uh, we saw the uh, 2080 beating out the 1080 Ti and then sort of the 2070 coming close. Uh, and then of course, stepping up to the 2080 Ti. That did uh, score quite a victory, uh, but I was kind of surprised. I thought the 2080 uh, did pretty well here out of this range, just like Forza Horizon 4. I thought it was coming a little bit closer to the uh, 2080 Ti than it was to the 2070. So it was kind of spreading its wings in this title uh, yet again. And so moving up to 4K showed similar results. So the Aorus 2080 was going very hard, at least out of the box. And we'll talk about the overclocks a little bit later because it is quite interesting, but it is sort of redeeming the 2080, at least in its difficult price performance spot. Uh, but moving over to Call of Duty Black Ops 4, we saw at 1440p the 2080 beating that of the 1080 Ti. And then of course the RTX 2080 Ti beasting pretty much everything. Uh, but when we look at the 4K numbers, the 1080 Ti did score pretty much a tie with the 2080. And then the 2070 was coming a little bit behind, but still beating that of the 1080. So for the games, when it comes to GTX 1000 series versus RTX 2000 series, it's looking like it depends on the game. And I guess a general trend that you will see is the older the game, I guess the more it'll favor the 1000 series in terms of price performance. Uh, but when we move to newer titles, that's when the RTX 2000 series starts to pull a little bit ahead as shown in some of these synthetic benchmarks here. We'll pull up First of all, Fire Strike, where the 1080 Ti does do pretty well in this particular benchmark, beating that of the 2080 by a comfortable margin. But the 2070 does beat that still of the 1080 in this benchmark, and the 2080 Ti does beat that of the 1080 Ti. Uh, the overclocked numbers here, and this is where I'm gonna show all the overclocks, uh, showed that the Aorus card was beating the Strix by a little bit, but out of the box, you can see 
that the numbers uh, on the uh, Aorus X series cards across all lines here on the 2070, 2080, and 2080 Ti uh, were favoring them with those pre-factory overclocks, uh, which are a little bit aggressive, especially on the 2080, which we didn't get uh, that much out of in terms of core clocks. Uh, the other two, the 2070 and also 2080 Ti, we got over 100 megahertz boost. Uh, the 2080, we had to get only 91 megahertz on total boost. Hence why in those benchmarks in some titles, it was coming closer to the TI model than it was to the 2070. But when we move over to Time Spy Extreme, for example, this is where the RTX cards really shine compared to the 10 series cards pulling comfortably ahead uh, with the 2070 surprisingly coming very close to that of the 1080 Ti. And the overclocks here on the 2070 in particular were quite impressive. Uh, also on the 2080 Ti and, and the RTX 2080 uh, not going as high as the others in terms of actual margins. So basically now with the performance numbers, all three of these cards are very impressive and they've got massive coolers on them, 1.45 kilos for the 2080 Ti. That also features a 16 plus three phase VRM. And then we move over to the 2080, that's got a 12 plus two phase VRM on a 1250 gram total weight. And then the 2070 has 1250 grams and that has a 10 plus two phase VRM. So they're all built with beefy coolers in mind. You also get a four year warranty on all three of these cards. So Aorus have definitely stepped it up like Gigabyte have, and they're putting their money where their mouth is. They think they have a superior product in all ways, shapes and forms. And pulling up the temperature numbers here, the 2070 did do very well with this cooler. They got three 100 mil fans, and even at 100% fan speeds, they weren't getting that loud. It wasn't that annoying. I'd say 60% is really quiet. It's the quietest 60% I've ever heard on any graphics card, uh, but also stepping it up to 80%, I felt like the 2080 Ti did need 80% in order to keep the temperature under control. Uh, the other two cards, however, were very comfortable at 60%. And then if you left it on auto, especially with the 2070, that was getting 43%. This was just totally whisper quiet. And of course, the biggest thing of this graphics card to talk about is those three ring blade LED fans. And honestly, they're one of the coolest looking implementations of RGB I've seen in a long time. You can customize the profiles uh, with the Aorus engine and uh, make three different colors in the tri-blade. And it does look really gorgeous at night. So if you do want to vertically mount one of these graphics cards, then they will look really cool inside of any build. And we also saw them in PAX, for example, in the CT and T build in Alex from Simple Mods builds, and they were looking very schmick. So you do get the bling with these cards, the side and also the rear also have the RGB Aorus logo, which you can change in tandem with the ring blade fans. And for the rear of these cards, the input output is very impressive. Even though they've gone away with the DVI port, they have accounted for that with three HDMI outs, as well as three display outs and a USB type C, which will support display as well. So that's seven ports in total across all three of these graphics cards, making the 2070 definitely a great play if you need a lot of output. There's also some other things to talk about with this card. You get an included GPU support bracket, as well as the fact that the PCB itself, they've made a note that they use aerospace grade PCB material, which essentially makes it moisture proof as well as dust proof. So if you do put this in a water cooling build and you have a water loop that leaks, uh, these PCBs here will protect you against a short circuit, which is a very good thing to have if you're going full enthusiast. But beside all that, here's conclusion time. And I guess we're gonna get down to the question of, first of all, with the 2080 Ti Aorus versus the ROG Strix, which should you go for and why? I think they're both gonna come in with a premium in terms of their price points. Uh, this actually isn't for sale in the US yet. I can't find it at least anywhere, at least on Newegg or Amazon. In Australia, it's coming in at $2,149 which is a step up above even the Gigabyte 2080 Ti, for example. Uh, so if you do wanna pay that premium, you will get a bigger cooler, you will get a beefed up PCB with more phases, you also get a pre-overclock out of the factory if you get the X edition, as well as some other cool things like RGB ring fans, 100 mil fans and the stand. Uh, but in terms of the ROG Strix itself, uh, that has, I believe, a heavier cooler, a chunkier cooler. And I believe when you're overclocking both these models, it will run a little bit quieter. So I believe in terms of comparisons between that and this, uh, your overclocks really aren't gonna go that much higher on either model. I guess it's gonna come down to silicon lottery, but what you will get on the Strix is a quieter fan speed, at least for handling the temperatures. And then on this, I believe you'll get a better aesthetic. 
with some really cool RGB bling. But as for the two cards that are available in the US, there's the 2070 and the 2080. And just like the Gigabyte 2070, I really like the Aorus 2070. It's coming in at 599 US, so it does have a premium at least over the current price of the Gigabyte variant. Uh, that also has a four year warranty, so I was pretty impressed with that. But this one, you get a beefier cooler that will run so quiet and will be overclocked out of the box with some very impressive numbers, as well as getting all the bling and the inputs and outputs on the uh, rear of the card, seven in total. In Australia, it'll set you back 1,039 AUD. And then move over to the 2080, that's a similar story to the 2070, except you get more power. And at least in this sample that we got here, a more aggressive overclock uh, did have a power limit of 127%. 2080 Ti did have 122% and this only unfortunately had 109%. So I would like to see the limits lifted on that. Perhaps Nvidia has deliberately limited the 2070 as to not make it too good a value for money a proposition. Uh, but the 2080 definitely performs uh, better than the 2070. It also costs more coming in at 789 US. Uh, and then also in Australia, 1,462 Aussie. So I will have to critique the Aussie pricing, at least on both these models here. It is a little bit more expensive than I'm used to seeing, at least when we compare the Aussie dollar to the US dollar in relation to what people in the US can get these graphics cards for. But lastly, in terms of these graphics cards, the Aorus lineup is the premium option. The Gigabyte is your value for money option. And I can say after spending quite a bit of time with these, I am in love with these uh, RGB ring-like LED fans. I think it's something that's really cool, but also Aorus themselves have done a really good job of keeping the thermals under control as well as the overclocks out of the factory are rock solid. Now, in terms of also, before I get on out here, the 2080 Ti Auto AI Overclock, a new feature that's been introduced with the RTX series was that it found an overclock that really wasn't that much better than this one out of the box. Uh, also, my manual overclock beat both the out of the box overclock and also the auto AI overclock by quite a bit. So if that's anything to go by, if you guys like manual overclocking, definitely go for it and extract more performance, especially with weather conditions being uh, summer or winter, you should always set a winter overclock versus a summer overclock and get the most out of your hardware. But also no, I didn't answer the question completely. Would I pick this or this ROG Strix? And you can't do that to me guys you can't put me on the spot i'd honestly just pick whichever is best for you i honestly i, I love the ring fans they just look so cool I, <laughs> what am i becoming in 2018 you are becoming an rgb fanboy brian you need to stop now before it's too late Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comments section below what you think of the new Aorus cards and their RGB bling, as well as the performance and the feature set. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.